Previously, we looked at how to use Geometry Reader to create varying effects based on where a view is on the screen. That code all works fine, and you'll certainly see it in lots of apps. But SwiftUI provides some helpful alternatives that can be much easier. First, let's look again at this current code we had from the end of the previous video. This makes a simple cover flow style effect using a horizontal scroll view, then 20 views or 90 views inside there, each with some text attached to it, and a very gentle rotation based on where they are in the scroll view. Let's press Command Command R and give it a quick try. Here we go. There's a lot of views scrolling around neatly like that. Now that all works. That's all fine. But what we're doing here is using the geometry reader around all our text. Okay, and as a result, we've had to provide an explicit width and height for the geometry reader. So it doesn't automatically expand to take all the available space. Now Swift UI gives us an alternative called visual effect, and it has a very specific purpose and a very specific restriction. It lets us apply effects that change the way something looks, which in practice means it can't do anything that affects the actual layout position or frame of a view. This modifier works in a very interesting way. We pass a closure to run and we'll be given the content we're modifying, as well as a geometry proxy for it. And that content we're modifying, of course, is our view, but we can't just apply any modifiers we want to, like normally would. Again, we can't do anything that affects the actual layout position of the view. Fortunately, that still leaves lots of modifiers for us to use, including some that might surprise you. You can use rotation effect, rotation 3D effect, and even offset. So although the effect how views are drawn, they don't change the frame of the view. And so we can rewrite this code to use a visual effect instead. I'm going to go ahead and remove this geometry proxy from here, like this. And then rather than applying this whole degrees da, 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 thing here, I'm going to say after the background red, this is where our frame is going to happen. We've got a fixed size at that point. And then we say, let's apply a visual effect. And this thing will be given the content we're modifying and a proxy we're working with here. And this is where we do our transformation. That's where we modify our code somehow. Now, in our case, I'm going to take this rotation 3D effect here and apply it to the content inside the visual effect. I'll do content and then just paste that on in below. So, it's this very, very similar in layout. We still have rotation 3D effect, degrees, minus frame, and global, da, da, da. get one eighth of that value, go around uh, Y, but now it's modifying inside the visual effect modifier. So let's press Command R now. And you see it looks exactly the same. The result is the same, which is really, really nice. Now, yes, the code is a little bit shorter, but this is a much neater solution than using the geometry reader no longer have to add a second frame modifier to stop things trying to take up the full screen. This scroll view we just built can live alongside other parts of our Swift UI layout without screwing things up. What we have now is a lot nicer, but with just two extra modifiers, we can make this whole thing look a lot better. The first is called scroll target layout, which I'd like you to apply to the H stack. So down here, you are a scroll target layout. Now this thing tells SwiftUI we want to make each view inside the H stack be a scroll target, something that's considered important when it comes to scrolling around. The second is scroll target behavior view aligned. I'd like to add to the scroll view. So down here, you have a scroll target behavior of view aligned. And this tells SwiftUI I should make the scroll view move smoothly between all the scroll targets it contains, which we just defined here as being every view inside our HTAC. If you put these two together, the result is lovely. Run it back now. Here's number one. If I pull number two across and then release it, it jumps to the leading edge. Go a little bit, it'll jump back again. It always jumps. There's always exactly one view at the start. No matter how fast or slow you go, it'll always end up with one view neatly at the start, which works much, much better.